For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to Around the World in 8 Minutes, a show by People's Dispatch where we bring you stories of resistance and solidarity from across the globe. First, we go to India, where in the capital city is Jawaharlal Nehru University, violence by a right-wing student's group disrupted the student election process. On the morning of September 5, members of the right-wing student's group, Akhil Bharatiya Vidyarthi Parishad, or ABVP, attacked students and activists of the United Left Alliance during the Students' Union election debate. ABVP cadres resorted to punching students while hurling sexist abuses at them. One student affiliated to the Students' Federation of India, Venkatesh, was severely injured in the attack and was taken to the hospital. The attack came during a break marking the end of the first session of the prestigious presidential debate, which witnessed charged speeches by presidential candidates of various students' groups. Speaking to People's Dispatch, the outgoing president of JNU Students' Union and member of All India Students' Association, N. Sai Balaji, said, that ABVP, which claims to represent students' interests, has exposed itself once again. When the whole country was watching JNU's democratic traditions, the ABVP, which never has answers to students' questions, indulged in violence, assaulting Venkatesh. Imagine what they would do once if they were elected to the union. Last year's student union elections in JNU had also witnessed massive violence by the ABVP after the right-wing group lost the union elections to the left alliance. JNU's student body has a history of rejecting right-wing forces and giving the mandate to leftist students' groups. This year's student union elections will be held on September 6th. The four communist students' organizations in the university are fighting the polls together under the banner of the United Left Alliance. Moving on to Zimbabwe, on September 3, hundreds of doctors across the country's public hospitals who are members of the Zimbabwe Hospital Doctors Association began an indefinite strike to demand that their salaries be restored. Doctors in Zimbabwe, like other civil servants, have suffered from the continuous erosion in the value of their salaries and they have complained that due to the rise in prices, they are unable to afford the resources required to report to work. The doctors represented by the ZHDA from different central hospitals will not return to work until the value of their salaries is restored to match the rising prices of commodities. The strike action came after negotiations between the government and the Apex Council, which represents a number of civil servants' unions, failed to reach an agreement to restore the value of salaries lost by civil servants over the past few months. Payment in US dollars was abandoned after RTGS was introduced as the new currency in October 2018. Since then, the salary of the lowest paid public doctors, when measured in US dollar equivalent, dropped from 475 US dollars to 40 US dollars. The measurements are given in US dollar terms because prices in RTGS, including that of basic commodities such as bread and medicine, have been varying in accordance with the value of the RTGS to the US dollar ratio. Initially, when the new currency was introduced, it was pegged to the US dollar at a 1 is to 1 ratio. However, with the continuous slide in its value, it now takes more than 10 RTGS dollars to buy one US dollar. Throughout this period of decline, wage payments to civil servants made in RTGS remained the same. As a consequence, their real incomes have reduced to less than 10% of what they were before. The Apex Council demanded that the salaries be restored to an RTGS equivalent of 475 US dollars and be fixed to the interbank ratio so that any further decline in the value of RTGS vis-à-vis -vis the US dollar would increase their pay proportionally and offset any loss of income. However, the government on August 23rd proposed a mere 60% pay hike for doctors which would raise the salary of the lowest paid doctors to 100 US dollars. For other civil servants, including teachers, a hike of 76% was suggested as the salaries of the lowest paid among them dropped to as low as 30 US dollars last month. Both the doctors and teachers unions represented by the Apex Council have rejected this offer as insufficient. Pointing to the skyrocketing prices in the market, fuel rising by 900%, food by 500%, rents hiking, ZHDA Acting President Peter Gabriel said that a 60% hike was grossly insufficient. Zimbabwe's health minister has threatened to forbid such indefinite strikes by doctors, insisting that the government expects that our workers stick to the fact that they are in an essential service. As an essential service, 
you cannot just disappear and leave your patient alone. However, Peter Gabriel maintains that we are not downing the tools per se. We are simply incapacitated. We simply do not have the means to report for work. The ZHDA in a previous letter sent on August 14 had already alerted the government authorities about the total incapacitation of its members, giving the employer a grace period of three weeks to present practical solutions for a financial crisis. While wages have remained virtually stagnant over the past months, prices of basic goods and services have been rising astronomically, the union pointed out. While highlighting the toll this is taking on doctors, the letter stated members are struggling to meet the cost of basic needs, that is food and shelter, let alone clothing and healthcare. Forget sending our children to school and paying our bills. While the Apex Council negotiations were ongoing, the union members, in good faith, continue to shoulder the burden of practicing a profession that is categorized as an essential service by using the little savings they had or by borrowing money to report to work. A ZHDA letter says that now all our resources have been exhausted. Now we go to Britain, where hundreds of people protest in London outside the venue which will host an arms fair organized by the Defence and Security Equipment International. The protesters from the War on Want and other organizations demanded an end to the sale of weapons to Israel due to its occupation of Palestine and other grave crimes. The DSEI fair, scheduled to begin next Tuesday, that is September 10th, is backed by the United Kingdom government. The arms fair, which is organized every two years, has witnessed the presence of military delegations from several countries that have been accused of war crimes. On Monday, the protesters attempted to peacefully block the movement of weapons into the venue at the Excel Center with banners reading Stop Arming Israel and the police used force to disperse them. They were seen grabbing and pushing the demonstrators to the sides of the road. The executive director of War on Want, Asad Rahman, said that the British government is rolling out the red carpet for human rights violating regimes to buy the weapons of death. He further said we no longer need empty words or crocodile tears. The government has to act and the government has to shut down this arms fair and shut down this immoral trade. According to the campaign against the arms trade, the British government approved the sale of weapons and military equipment worth 17.8 million US dollars to Israel in 2018. On May 18 last year, just four days after Israeli forces massacred 68 Palestinians during the Great March of Return protests in Gaza, a deal for the sale of military training equipment worth 125,000 US dollars was approved. In 2017, the British government had issued arms export licenses worth 294 million US dollars to defense contractors exporting military equipment to Israel, representing a staggering increase of 256% compared to the previous year. The UK has also been complicit in war crimes elsewhere. A recent United Nations report noted that the UK, the United States and France may be complicit in war crimes in Yemen by providing logistical and intelligence support to the Saudi Arabia-led coalition. The report states that it has found potential evidence of the role played by these countries in assisting the coalition's war tactics in Yemen, which include the indiscriminate bombing of civilian infrastructure and starving the people. This is all we have in this episode of Around the World in 8 Minutes. For more such stories and videos, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.